Okay, our objective today is to be able to find equivalent forms of fractions, decimals, and percents. The word percent means when we write a number out of 100. Right? The word percent is a ratio that compares a number to 100. The symbol for the percent is the percent sign. You can write a percent as a fraction with the denominator of 100. Each number, or every number, has three forms. It has its fraction form, it has its decimal form, and it has its percent form. If you look at this table of examples, you can see that we have various fractions here in the first column. You have the decimal forms of those fractions in the second column, and you have the percent form of the fractions and decimals in the third column. Any number you can write in its fraction form, its decimal form, or its percent form. And we need each of those forms because different situations are going to require different forms of the number. Alright, so let's take a look and see how do we go from one form to another form. Okay, we're going to start first with our um, percents. And we want to be able to take percents and write percents in the different forms. So we want to be able to take percents and write it in the fraction form, and we want to be able to take percents and write it in the decimal form. Okay? So let's start. If we want to write 36% as a fraction, we write a percent as a fraction with a denominator of 100, and then we simplify the fraction. Okay, well that's simple enough. Step 1 says to write the percent as a fraction with a denominator of 100. Okay, so let's write 36 over 100. And then step 2 simply says to simplify that fraction. Well, we can simplify 36 over 100 by dividing by, looks like 4 over 4. And when we simplify that fraction, 36 divided by 4 is going to be 9, and 100 divided by 4 is going to be 25. So now we have the fraction form of 36%. We start with the percent over 100 because the word percent means out of 100. So we have 36 over 100 and then we want to simplify that fraction using a common factor for both the numerator and the denominator, which is 4 in this case. And that's where we get the simplest form of 36 over 100, which is going to be 9 over 25. All right, so let's try examples 1a and 1b using the same method. Example 1a says to take 55% and write it as a fraction. So that means we want to write 55 over 100, right? Because the word percent means out of 100. And then we want to simplify that fraction. Well, when I see that 55 and 100 end in 5 and 0, I know that I can divide both 55 and 100 by 5. So when we simplify that fraction, 55 divided by 5 is going to give us 11, 100 divided by 5, that's going to give us 20, and now we have the simplest form of 55%. 55% means 55 out of 100, and 55 out of 100 simplifies to 11 over 20. Let's try example 1b. Example 1b says to write 4% as a fraction. Well, we start with 4% with 4 over 100 because the word percent means out of 100. And then we want to see if we can simplify 4 and 100 by finding a common factor. And we can divide both 4 and 100 by 4. When we divide that numerator, 4 divided by 4 is going to give us 1, and 100 divided by 4 is going to give us 25. And now we have the simplest form of 4 out of 100. That's going to be 1 over 25. So 4% as a fraction is the same as 1 over 25. All right? Now, how do we write percents as decimals? Well, to write percents as decimals, you divide by 100. And when we divide by 100, we simply have to move an imaginary decimal point two places to the left. Well, what's that going to look like? Well, if I look at example 2a and we want to write 25% as a decimal, 
I simply take 25% and put an imaginary decimal point in the back of the number and we slide that decimal point two places to the left. Each time I slide that decimal point, I'm dividing by a power of 10. So when we slide the decimal point two places left, we're dividing 25% by 100. And think about what the word percent means. It means out of 100. So 25 out of 100 is the same as 25 divided by 100. And what's 25 divided by 100? Well, our decimal, decimal point goes from the back of the number to the front of the number. So that's going to be 0 0.25 or 25 hundredths as a decimal. Right? And if we look at our next example, write 2% as a decimal. We start with the decimal behind the number or in the back of the number and we slide that decimal point two places to the left to divide that number by 100. When we slide the decimal point two places to the left, we see that we're going to need another decimal place, so we add a zero here as a placeholder, and now our decimal point's here, right, two places to the left. Well, what's that going to be as a decimal? That's 0 0.02 as a decimal. So when we change percents to decimals, that's really uh, an easy process. We just have to slide that decimal point two places to the left because mathematically we're dividing that percent by 100 to go from percent to decimal. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples. We have six examples here and we're going to take each of these examples we're going to write each as a fraction and we're going to write each as a decimal. Okay, well let's start with the decimal because that's probably the easiest thing to do. So we take 48%, we start in the back of the number, we slide two places to the left, and that's going to give us 48 hundredths as a decimal. Now, how do we write that um, percent as a fraction? Well, if you remember, we start with that percent over 100. So 48% is 48 over 100, and then we want to simplify 48 over 100. Well, what can we divide both 48 and 100 by? Well, we can divide by 4 over 4. So 48 divided by 4, that's going to give us 12. And 100 divided by 4, that's going to give us 25. So 48% is the same as 12 over 25. So we have the decimal form of 48%. That's going to be 0 0.48 or 42 hundredths. We have the fraction form of 48%. That's going to be 12 over 25. And we want to do the same with each of these examples. All right, so we're going to start with the decimal form first. Slide that decimal point two places to the left because we are dividing by 100. So that's going to be equal to 0 0.55 or 55 hundredths. 55 percent is the same as 55 hundredths. To write the fraction form of 55 percent, we're going to write 55 over 100 and then we want to simplify that fraction. Well, When I see the numbers end in 5 and 0, I know I can divide by 5 in both the numerator and the denominator. And when we do that, we get 55 divided by 5 is 11. 100 divided by 5 is going to give us 20 and we have 11 twentieths as our answer. All right. If we look at our next example, 108 percent. We want to write that as a uh, decimal, so we're going to slide that decimal point two places left, and that's going to give us 1.08 or 1 and 8 hundredths. So 108 percent is equal to 1 and 8 hundredths. All right, notice that the percent is greater than 100 percent, and that's why our decimal is greater than 1. So let's write it as a fraction, and the same rules apply even though it's more than 100 percent. We take the percent and we put it over 100. So 108 percent is the same as 108 over 100. Well, what can we divide 108 and 100 by? I believe we could divide by 4 over 4. All right, and if we do that, what's 108 divided by 4? That's going to be 54. Half of that is going to be 27. And our denominator, 100 divided by 4, that's going to be 25. So we get 27 over 25, and if we want to write that as a mixed number, 
we would divide 25 into 27. That's going to go one time with 2 left over out of the 25. So we could also write that as 1 and 2 25ths. All right, let's do a few more. 13%, we're going to slide that decimal point two places to the left. And that's going to give us 0 0.13 or 13 hundredths. So 13% is the same as 13 hundredths. If we write that as a fraction, that's going to be 13 over 100. 13% is the same as 13 over 100. And that is a fraction in simplest form because 13 is a prime number. It only has two factors, 1 and 13. And so we know that's simplest form. Example 7, 8%. To change to its decimal form, we slide the decimal point two places to the left, and we're here. That's going to give us 0 0.08. So 8 hundredths is the same as, or 8%, I'm sorry, is the same as 8 hundredths. When we write that as a fraction, we take 8% and we put it over 100. So that's going to be 8 out of 100. To simplify 8 out of 100, we can divide by 4 over 4. When we divide by 4 over 4, the numerator, 8 divided by 4 is 2. The denominator, 100 divided by 4 is going to be 25. And there's the fraction form of 8%. That's going to be 2 25ths. And then our last example, we have 126%. We slide that decimal point two places to the left. That's going to be 1.26. Oops, let's try that again. 1.26. So 126% is the same as 1 and 26 hundredths. To change 126% to its uh, fraction form, we write 126 over 100 and then we simplify that fraction we could divide by let's see I believe 4 out of 4 again let's see divide by 4 over 4 and that's going to give us what that's going to give us 53 no we divide by 2 over 2 there my bad All right so we divide by 2 over 2 and that's going to give us 53 over I'm sorry, 63 over 50. So that's going to give us 63 out of 50. And if we want to write 63 out of 50 as a mixed number, 50 goes in the 63 one time with 13 out of the 50 left over. So we would get 1 and 13 fiftieths. Either answer is correct, the improper fraction is correct, or the mixed number. All right. So that takes care of fractions, I'm sorry, that takes care of percents to both fractions and decimals. Okay, well, let's take a look at, uh, oh, we have uh, some percents with fractions here. Got to take care of that. 33 and one third percent, we want to write that as a fraction. Same rules apply. We write the percent as a fraction over 100. So this is going to be 33 and one third out of 100. And 33 and one third out of 100 uh, is a complex fraction. And we were working on our complex fractions in the previous chapter. So we want to rewrite this as a division problem. So we multiply that numerator. 3 times 33 is 99 plus 1 is 100. So in the numerator we have 100 over 3. And in the denominator, we have 100, and we're going to put that 100 over 1. We want to take our complex fraction and change that to a multiplication problem. So it's going to be 100 over 3 times 1 over 100. We can divide out 100 and 100. And when we multiply numerator times numerator, that gives us 1. Denominator times denominator, that gives us 3. So we have 33 and one third percent is the same as the fraction one third. All right. Now, remember the process is the same over and over again. When we want to write those fractions as, uh, I'm sorry, when we, when we want to write those percents as fractions, we write the percent over 100. Then we just have to simplify that fraction. 
Okay, let's take a look at this next example. 40.2%. What do we do with that? Well, step one, write it over 100. So 40.2% is the same as 40.2 over 100. And then we want to simplify that fraction. Well, because we have a decimal in the numerator, we have to get rid of that decimal in the numerator. And because there's one decimal place in that numerator, we're actually going to multiply that fraction by 10 over 10. And let's see what happens with that. 40.2 times 10, we multiply by 10 by sliding that decimal place one place to the right. That's going to give us 402 in the numerator. And 100 times 10, that's going to give us 1,000 in the denominator. Now we can simplify that fraction by dividing by 2 over 2. And 402 divided by 2, that's going to be 201 in the numerator. That's going to give us 500 in the denominator. And there's your fraction form for 40.2%. That's going to be 201 over 500. Right, so let's try these last two examples, right, just to get a little bit more practice. We want to write this as a percent, uh, this percent as a fraction in simplest form. Our first step, write it over 100. So we multiply, well, let's write it over 100 first, 83 and a third over 100. And then we have to take this numerator, write it as a fraction. So we multiply 3 times 83. That's 249 plus 1. That's, so that's going to be 250 over 3 in the numerator. And this denominator, that's going to be 100. And we're going to put that 100 over 1. So here's our complex fraction. We have to take our complex fraction right, and multiply by the reciprocal. So that's going to be 250 over 3 times 1 over 100. Now we can divide out by, let's see, what can we divide by? We can divide by 50. 100 divided by 50 is going to be 2. 250 divided by 50, that's going to be 5. And now we're ready to multiply our numerator times our numerator. 5 times 1 is 5. Our denominator times the denominator. 3 times 2 is 6. And we get 5 sixths is the fraction form for 83 and a third percent. All right, and then we have our last example here, 84.4 percent. We want to write that as a fraction first. That's going to be 84.4 over 100. And because we have this decimal in the numerator and one decimal place, we're going to multiply by 10 over 10 to get rid of that decimal in the numerator. Oops. And that's going to give us 84.4 times 10. That's 844. And then the denominator, that's going to be 1,000. And then we can simplify that fraction by dividing by, I believe, 4 over 4. right? And that's going to give us the following. It's going to give us 211 over 250. And that is our fraction in simplest form. All right, so that takes care of taking percents. When we start with a percent, we want to be able to write the percents as fractions, and we want to take those percents, and we want to be able to write those percents as decimals. Okay, well, what happens when we start with decimals? All right, well, to go from decimal to percent is rather simple. To go from decimal to percent, write decimal, to percent, we multiply right, by 100. Decimal to percent, we multiply by 100. Multiply by 100. And when we multiply by 100, that simply means we move the decimal from decimal two places right. Two places to the right. All right. So if we start with seven hundredths and we multiply that decimal by 100, we move the decimal two places to the right, that's going to give us the following. 
seven hundredths is equal to seven percent. Rather easy to change decimal to percent. So if we look at these other examples, 52 hundredths, move that decimal point two places to the right, and we have 52 hundredths is going to be equal to 52 percent. Our next example is 5 hundredths, move that decimal point two places to the right because we're multiplying by 100, and we get 5 hundredths is the same as 5%. Our last example, 5 tenths, we want to multiply that decimal by 100 to go from decimal to percent. We have to add a zero as a placeholder when we go two places to the right there. So that's going to give us 5 tenths is the same as 50%. So when we're going from decimal to percent, we're simply sliding the decimal point two places to the right and we are multiplying by 100. All right. So let's see what we have here. All right. So we have some practice. If we want to write these decimals uh, as percents, and then okay, good. So decimals as percents, two places to the right. It's going to be 82 percent. And each of these examples, four hundredths, two places to the right, that's going to be 4%. 98 hundredths, two places to the right, that's 98%. Six tenths, two places to the right, going to need zero for a placeholder there, and that's going to be 60%. All right? So that covers decimal to percent, but what about decimal to fraction? And that's our next slide. To write decimals as fractions, you write the fraction the way you say the decimal, then you simplify. We want to write the fraction the way we say the decimal, then we simplify. Okay, well, what's that going to look like? Well, how do we say this decimal? We say this decimal as 2 and 2 tenths. So we write the fraction the way we say the decimal, and then we simplify. How do we simplify 2 over 10? We divide that by 2 over 2, and that's going to give us 2 and 1 fifth. So 2 and 2 tenths, the decimal is the same as 2 and 1 fifth as the fraction. When we look at example 14, how do we say this decimal? When we say this decimal, 1 and 6 tenths. And then we want to simplify the 6 tenths by dividing by 2 over 2. And that's going to give us the following, 1 and 3 fifths. We write the fraction the way we say the decimal, and then we simplify. How do we say this decimal? Well, we would say 8 hundredths. So we write 8 over 100, and then we simplify 8 over 100 by dividing by 4 over 4, and that's going to give us 2 25ths. Our next example, how would I say that decimal? Well, that would be 27 hundredths. And 27 hundredths is in simplest form, right? So we leave it just that way. This next decimal, we would read this as 1 and 76 hundredths. And then we can simplify 76 over 100 by dividing by 4 over 4. And that's going to give us 1 and, what's that going to be? Half of 76, 38, half of 38. So that should be 19 20 fifths. 1 and 19 20 fifths is the same as 1 and 76 hundredths. Now, what do we do with these repeating decimals, right? That's a little tricky, all right? But for seventh grade, I just tell my seventh graders the following. Anytime we have two digits repeating like this, that's very simply a fraction over 99. So 15 hundredths repeating is simply 15 over 99. And then we want to simplify 15 over 99. We could divide that by what, 3 over 3? 
and that's going to give us what? 15 divided by 3 is 5, 99 divided by 3, that's going to give us 33. So 15 hundredths repeating is the same as 5 over 33. If we have one digit repeating, right, a one digit repeating is going to be a fraction over 9. Right, that denominator of 9 gives us the repeating pattern. If we have two digits repeating, our denominator would be 99. If we have one digit repeating, our denominator is going to be 9. So this is going to be 3 over 9. And 3 over 9, we would simplify by dividing by 3 over 3. And that's going to give us 1 third. All right. Our next example for problem 20, we have a two digit repeating pattern. So that's going to be over 99. So that's going to be uh, 0, 09 or just 9 over 99. All right. That's going to be 9 over 99. And how do we simplify 9 over 99? We would divide by 9 over 9. And that's going to give us 1 11th as our fraction in simplest form. Our next example for problem 21, we have a one digit repeating pattern. So that's going to be a fraction over 9. And that is a fraction in simplest form, 7 ninths. And our last repeating decimal, we have a two digit repeating pattern. The 4, 6 is going to repeat, right? That's what that line means over the 4 and the 6. So that's going to be 46 over 99. And 46 over 99 is a fraction in simplest form. Our last two examples, I would read this fraction as five thousandths. So we would write five over one thousand. We can simplify five over one thousand by dividing by five over five and that's going to give us one over, what's that, two hundred would be our fraction in simplest form. In our last example, we would read this as 4 tenths. 4 tenths, we could simplify by dividing by 2 over 2. And when we divide by 2 over 2, that's going to give us the fraction 2 fifths. So remember, when we want to go from decimal to percent, we simply slide the decimal point two places to the right. And when we want to go from decimal to fraction, we write the fraction the way we say the decimal, and then we simplify. All right, so our last conversions. We want to take fractions and go from fraction to percent, and we want to be able to go from fraction to decimal. So what's that going to look like? All right, well, let's see. We see here that to change a fraction to a percent, we write and solve a proportion over 100. And what's that going to look like? Well, let's see. If I look at example one, right, one half, we want to know what percent is one half equivalent to. Well, the word percent means out of 100. So I write a proportion with a denominator of 100. A proportion is two equivalent ratios. Once we set up our proportion, we cross multiply and divide. So we multiply 2 times n. That's going to give us the product of 2n. We multiply 1 times 100 using our butterfly method. That's going to give us 100. Oops, I want that in black. All right, that's going to give us 100. And then we solve the one step equation. Cross multiply, then we divide. So we divide both sides by 2, and we wind up with n is going to be equal to 50%. The word percent means out of 100. So when we solve for n, we're getting the number out of 100. 50 out of 100 is the same as 50%. All right, and we just want to practice that and be able to execute that. So 2 out of 3 is equal to what number? out of 100. So we start by writing our proportion. Then we solve our proportion using the cross products property. 3 times n is going to give us 3n. And then we multiply 2 times 100. Right, That's going to give us 200. And then we divide. Our one step equation, we divide both sides by 3. 
they cancel, and n is going to be equal to, when we divide 3 into 200, that's going to give us 66 and 2 thirds out of 100, which is 66 and 2 thirds percent. All right? Now, what does that long division look like? Well, let's show you here. If we have 200, and we're dividing that 200 by 3, right? what's that going to look like? It's going to be the following. 3 goes in here 6 times. 6 times 3 is 18. Subtract, we get 2. Bring down the 0. 3 goes into 20 6 times. 6 times 3 is 18. Subtract, we get 2. The remainder of 2, we put over our divisor of 3, and that's where our 66 and 2 thirds percent comes from. All right? Our next example, 1 out of 8. We want to make a fraction with a denominator of 100. So there's our proportion. We multiply 8 times n is going to give us the product, 8n. And then we multiply 1 times 100. That's going to give us a product of 100. We divide both sides by 8. Divide by 8. They cancel, and n is going to be equal to, uh, when we divide 100 by 8, that's going to give us, uh, oops, my bad, Oop. that's going to give us 12 and 1 half percent, right? And how do we get the 12 and a half percent? Well, let's show the division, right? 100 divided by 8, I'll do that up here. Right, so we have 100, uh, let's try to squeeze it here, 100 divided by 8, right, so that would look like this, 8 goes into 10 one time, 1 times 8 is 8, subtract I get 2, bring down the 0, 8 goes into 20 two times, 2 times 8 is 16, subtract we get 4, the remainder of 4, you put over your divisor of 8, and 12 and 4 eighths is the same as 12 and a half percent. All right. Our next few problems. We're starting off with a mixed number. 2 and 1 tenth. We want to rewrite that as a fraction first. So if we write that as a fraction, that's going to be equal to 2 times 10 is 20. Plus 1. So we take our 21 over 10. And that's the fraction we're going to use. 21 over 10 is equal to what amount over 100? Now, honestly, if you're just looking at this using equal fractions, instead of cross multiplying and dividing, which you could, right, you should be able to see 21 times 10 is going to give you 210, right? But we'll still be consistent. We'll do our cross products. 10 times n is going to be 10n, and then we multiply 21 times 100, that's going to be equal to 2100, and then we want to divide both sides by 10, divide by 10, they cancel, and n is going to be equal to 210 percent, 210 percent. All right, our next example, 3 and 3 fifths, write it as an improper fraction first, 5 times 3 is 15, 15 plus 3 is 18, so that's going to be 18 over 5. Try to set up our proportion. 18 over 5 is equal to what amount out of 100? There's our proportion. Find our cross products. 5 times n, that's going to be 5n. And then we multiply 18 times 100, that's going to be 1800. And then when we divide both sides by 5, divide by 5, divide by 5, they cancel, and that's going to give us the following. And is equal to 360% when we divide 1800 by 5. And you could use a calculator for that, or you could use a long division, but you will get 360%. And then our last example, we have 7 twentieths. 7 out of 20 is equal to what number out of 100? We cross multiply. 20 times n is going to be 20n. We multiply 7 times 100. 
that's going to be 700. We divide both sides of that equation by 20. They cancel and n is equal to 35 percent. All right. So if we want to change fraction to percent, when we write fraction to percent, we, we write and solve a proportion over 100. And then the last thing we want to be able to do is to change fractions to decimals. And here we use long division. Um, we divide the numerator by the denominator. Now when you do that, you can use a calculator. Uh, these are probably calculator questions, but we'll practice our long division, right? And we'll do the problems that way. So let's start with 5 eighths. We want to divide 8 into the, into the numerator of 5. I usually like to add uh, three zeros as place uh, placeholders. And then we do our division. 8 doesn't go into 5, but 8 goes into 50 six times. 6 times 8 is 48. We subtract, we get 2. Right? Bring down the 0. 8 goes into 20 two times. 2 times 8 is 16. We subtract, we get 4. We bring down the 0. 8 goes into 40 five times. 5 times 8 is 40. You subtract, you get 0. You should do your long division until the decimal either terminates or repeats. All right, let's look at our next one. Three-fifths, we divide the denominator of five into the numerator of three. And I usually start by adding three zeros. Sometimes we need less than three zeros, sometimes we'll need more. Five can't go into three, but five goes into 30 six times. Six times five is 30, subtract, we get zero. So we get a decimal that terminates rather quickly. That's nice when that happens. Our next example, we have to write that as a fraction first. So we multiply, 4 times 8 is 32. 32 and 7, that's going to be 39 over 8. And then we're ready to do our long division. So we're going to divide 8 into 39. And like I said before, I usually like to start by adding three zeros. And then we divide. 8 goes into 39 four times. 4 times 8 is 32. Subtract, we get 7. Bring down the 0. Decimal point goes in our quotient. 8 times 8 is 64. Subtract, we get 6. Bring down the 0. 7 times 8 is 56. Subtract, we get 4. Bring down the 0. 8 goes into 40 five times. 5 times 8 is 40, subtract, we get 0. And once again, we divide until the decimal either terminates or repeats. That decimal terminates in the thousands place. All right, our next example, 2 thirds. We divide 3 into 2, right? Add some zeros here. 3 can't go into 2, but 3 goes into 20 six times. 6 times 3 is 18. Subtract, we get 2. Bring down the 0. Now we see that same remainder of 20. So we know that that 6 is going to repeat. So we put the line over the 6 to show that that 6 is going to repeat. Once you recognize the repeating pattern, right, you can identify that by putting the line over the repeating number. 2 and 2 ninths. We have to write as a fraction first. 9 times 2 is 18 and 2 is 20. That's going to be 20 over 9, and then we set up our long division. 9 into 20, right, put a couple decimal points, or three zeros, and we divide. 9 goes into 20 two times. 2 times 9 is 18. Subtract, we get 2. Bring down the 0. 9 goes into 20 two times. 2 times 9 is 18. Subtract, I get 2. Bring down the 0. We see that 2 is going to repeat. So we get 2 and 2 tenths with the repeating pattern. Our last division problem, we're going to divide 25 into 3. Add a few zeros here. 
25 doesn't go in the 3, but 25 goes in the 30 one time. 1 times 25 is 25, subtract and get 5, bring down the 0. 25 goes into 50 two times. 2 times 25 is 50, we subtract, we get 0. So we get 12 hundredths as our decimal. Alright, so that you're able to see hopefully how we change fractions to decimals, fractions to percents, percents to decimals, percents to fractions, and decimals to fractions, and decimals to percents. Alright, I hope that that's been helpful.